Hello everyone. Uh, today I wanted to start up a little bit of a new series, I think. Uh, what I'm going to aim to do is help explain to anyone who's not aware and anyone who's newer looking to refine some of their ship designs and reassembly, I'm going to be trying to explain some of the mechanics by which the game operates to help newer players catch up and maybe even teach a few veterans something they hadn't thought of before. But I first thought I would uh, start off with one of the bigger topics that I end up discussing in a lot of the tournament videos is shields as a primary source of defense versus armor. Now these are two very similar Terran ships. The one on the left, if we look here, we can see that it's a 215p ship. It has an acceleration of 200.8 and it does, uh, it's pretty good mobility. You see it's got the three plasmas, it's got the light shield. The shield on the right here, you can clearly see, uh, actually this shouldn't even be here. This is the one that I'm actually going to be using in the video. But uh, this ship on the right here, you can see it has more thrusters. It's overall a lot bigger. It's got more armor. But most notably, it's faster. It has more acceleration. It turns a lot slower, but it moves much more quickly in battle. It's also less expensive. It's only 201p rather than uh, 215. So at a glance, one might think that these two ships should be fairly evenly matched. But in actuality, it's not even close in uh, in the actual tournament. So I'm going to go ahead and have these two ships fight now. And you can see for yourself just how much the difference between armor and shields actually is. Now, neither of these ships has the option of skirmishing. They're just not fast enough. They don't have enough range. So this ends up being a bit of a slugging match between the two. And you can already see, uh, looking at the scoreboard, that the armored ship is taking a, a fairly big point lead right off the bat. And even though it's less agile, it doesn't turn nearly as quickly, because it's able to accelerate more quickly using less budget, it's actually able to keep up with the much more nimble ship. And you can see now some armored blocks are starting to fall off. The armored ship is mostly keeping its front oriented toward its target, whereas the shield ship is kind of freaking out and trying to do anything it can to survive. But uh, I think we're going to see the shield ship fall apart here in just a second. Actually, that's, that's unusual. This is the best the shield ship has ever done in these. But I do think we're going to see the armored ship probably still win. Yeah, there it is. But like I said, that's the best I've seen the shield ship do, and I've done this fight half a dozen times already. But, you know, of course, you start recording and then everything is suddenly different. But, uh, so now, this one will actually probably go even worse for the shielded ship. And the, the two designs, you can tell, are very similar designs. They're not intended to be pretty or actually even all that effective as a ship. Uh, the, the point was to prove the difference between shields as a primary source of defense versus armor as a primary source of defense. And this makes a very strong case for that. Mostly showing that armor is cheaper. It allows you to build ships that are able to keep up with the enemy, even if they're not able to turn as quickly. They're able to pack more firepower in a smaller budget. And so when it comes to a, a slugging match, the armored ship you can see is vastly outperforming the shielded one over and over. And so I want to take a few minutes now and get into some of the numbers as to why. If you're playing reassembly to escape math class, I'm sorry, but uh, we uh, I've demonstrated to you visually how much the armored ship has the advantage over the shield ship, but now I'm going to explain why that is. So as I mentioned, we're going to be getting into the mathier parts of this now. And so if you're playing reassembly to avoid math, I'm sorry, but if you want to get if you want to get into the competitive mindset, you kind of have to look at a lot more than just uh, the shape of a thing. In this case, when we take a look at the numbers, you can see very clearly that the 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 thrusters, there are some very standout members of efficiency and thrust per P, for example. Uh, things of that nature, but uh, 
specifically what I want to cover is the real cost column as I've been calling it. To fit a generator, for example, the Terran large generator, or the to fit a shield, for example, the large Terran shield, you have to have, you don't just put the module on the ship and be done with it. It has a 500 regen, which means it burns 500 power per second, which means you're not just paying the 1250. You're also paying another 150 in generators just to run the shield. And that's a very important discrepancy with some of these. For example, the generators to run the farmer shield are almost half the cost of the shield itself. And that's one of your better examples. Um, one, of, one of the few notable examples, I think, are the, uh, the, the B shield, for example. The B core generates... 4,000 energy per second, and realistically, B ships don't use 4,000 energy per second. It's just not a thing they do. So the B shield doesn't... Uh, I, I included the real cost as a demonstration, but the formula itself actually just uses the base cost. But even then, we see the, the shields are actually very much so influenced by this effect especially this Terran or the Tinkerel small shield. It costs 30p. It seems like that's a, a great deal being able to put a nice shield on your ship. But realistically, its cost quadruples because of its shield recharge of 300, which is a lot of shield recharge for a very small shield. But it also does mean that that shield is substantially more expensive than it seems. And so when it comes to raw health value, the certain ones of these shields don't really hold up. Your your best bets are your Tinkerel Large and your Terran Small Shield because those are the ones that give you the highest amount of HP per cost. But as we saw with the, the two ships fighting, the Terran Small Shield still doesn't compete with Terran Armor. So when we want to look over here, what this is, uh, the real cost for thrusters is a little different because thrusters don't consume energy. They they are just there and they just push. So the real cost for thrusters is actually the the cost that it would require of thrusters to move that block at the minimum speed required for the NMSS tournaments. So if you need a ship to move faster, shields are still a very viable option because a faster ship generally tries to fight at longer range and doesn't doesn't brawl, it generally either kites or snipes, and you don't really need that sustained endurance that armor gives. And you end up subjecting yourself more to harassment than to direct assault. So when we look at the uh, the armor though here, this is intended for the, the brawler type where you just get close to the enemy and you slug it out until one of you dies. The, you can see the the real cost of these various things is all over the place, really. Uh, you you do have some standout, terrible members, like Tinkerel Armor is atrociously bad. This is one of the reasons you'll find competitive Tinkerel fleets use relatively little armor, and they rely more on shields, distance, and mobility. Uh, farmer Armor, which I frequently um, claim or which I frequently mention has to be, or is vastly weaker than it needs to be. You can see that it is almost as bad as Tinkerel Armor, except farmers can't really move as quickly as easily. But you've still got really standout members like the Terran Asteroid Thrusters on their large armor. Um, and even the Crystalline Armor does a very good job of being efficient. Chris the Crystal Ships are just hard to build because of the Penrose Tile Set. But the, uh, but most of the, the armor you can see, the, the popular factions tend to fall between 45 and uh, 60k health per cost, which compared to the 7.14 that you get out of a shield, it starts to make a little bit more sense. So down here on this chart is the number of thrusters it would require to move uh, based on the area of these two shields. The the Terran ships have been very popular lately, so I only did examples for them. But if we compare the large thrusters versus the small shields, 
you, the small shield has an area of 31,400 and gives you 1,000 health and costs 140. To cover that same area, you would need 35 pieces of the 3x3 armor, which, re which would require 24 thrusters, so 6 in each direction. The armor would give you 78,000 health for 192. So for a third more armor, or for a third more cost in thrusters, you can actually get 78 times the durability. Uh, for scale on that, uh, you could easily make this ship smaller. Um, most Terran ships that are small to begin with generally don't even fill the entire area of a large shield. And even then, that's just the armor blocks in this, uh, in this scenario. Uh, moving on to the station shield, though. The station shield covers an immense area, it's over 785,000 units, which would require 873 armor blocks, but that's only 52 of the asteroid thrusters. So in order to run that shield, you need 1,200 points invested between the shield and your generators versus the 936 it would cost for the armor. Shield gives you 5,000 health, and the armor gives you almost 2 million. And that's the, the efficiency you gain out of using and relying on armor rather than shields. So the next topic I really want to get into is time to live. Uh, so time to live is a measure of how long a given thing will survive under incoming fire. Uh, these two tables here are basically the same as the ones in the previous section of the video. These ones are a few of the staple brawler type weapons that we've seen uh, for each of the factions. Uh, I included red even though they're kind of a... Farmers in red we don't really see a whole lot of, especially in brawlers. But uh, I included them anyway. And tinkerel modular guns are way too variable to attempt to account for and generally aren't brawler suited anyway. So uh, they just get a lull across the board. But you can see, much like the shields, I did the real cost calculation for the turrets as well. For instance, the small plasma uses 44 energy per second, so it burns about 13 uh, points worth of generator per second in addition to its 17 cost. And you can see this down the board. Uh, I did include real cost for some of these things. Uh, the bees, I didn't include it because, again, bees tend to just use their core. They don't, generally don't use extra generators. I did include the real cost for the sentinels because they often will include generators on larger ships just to fuel their weapons. But this chart down here is what I really wanted to get into with this sheet. So this is... For any given shield, the sheet will attempt to calculate roughly how many weapons you could use and be approximately half of the shield's value and how much DPS those weapons will do. And then it calculates the time to live. So for 1400p, you could have the Terran large shield, the station shield, and it would survive under fire from these plasmas for less time than three armor blocks in any given direction. And if we shrink it down, or if we shrink the shield down, you can see th this is part of the real problem is when you start getting into larger ships, for instance, the kind of ship where you would have a large shield, 700p worth of large plasmas is only three of them. That's not a very big investment for a large ship, but it does over 3,000 DPS. If we compare that to the shield regen, the shield may as well not regen at all, basically. And you can see that the three armor blocks provide 6,700 health in that direction. Now this, this is, you could easily cover an entire ship in three armor blocks in every direction around and get more health in every direction than this ship with a large shield would be able to accomplish. The, the shields really just don't hold up to incoming fire. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the shield regen, is, the shields are kind of in a weird spot, I think, where 
they they kind of do this binary flip. Either they render your ship almost invincible or they might as well not exist. And unfortunately, most of the time, especially in a tournament environment, the case is that they might as well not exist on more ships than not. Even here, two small plasmas, barely more DPS than shield regen, you can see that the shield will only live for 25 seconds, whereas the three armor blocks will live for 28. And that's against two Terran small plasmas. If we were to look at hyperstacked B point defense, for example, the, the case gets even worse for the shield. Mostly because the difference, the, the shield will go down proportional to the difference between the total DPS and the shield regen. And it really, there's no real situation. Well, here you can see that the Annihilator just does not have enough DPS to break the shield. And that that's one of the few cases, this is what I was talking about though. Here, against a single Annihilator, a large shield, or a small shield, is invincible. It can't be killed. But, let's see... If we swap this to the Plasma Bolt... No, the Plasma Bolt's still not doing it either. But, uh... Anytime the weapon DPS outdoes the shield's regeneration by even the smallest amount, you can see that the shields basically just get knocked apart. Like, even the farmer uh, large shields... That's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know why that is. Um, so here it's actually invincible as well. But... Uh, let me pick a different weapon. But you can see, a lot of this boils down to... Even on the farmers, let's see. Yeah, okay, so the farmer large shield would outperform three of the farmer large armor blocks, right? So there are cases where shields are superior, but it largely boils down to, as in the other charge, uh, we could see that some of the weapons just weren't as efficient as some of the others. And that's a lot of what we're seeing as we flip through the chart here. Like, for example, the two Tempests would outperform... Uh, let's compare B heavy armor against B shields, and you can see even the Bs get the are better off armored than shielded. The this the uh, Terrans are better off armored than shielded. About the only ones where there's a strong case for shields over armor are with farmers and Tinkrel, and it's it's not because their shields are good; it's because their armor is atrocious. If that makes any sense. But, uh, that said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope, uh, I hope it maybe showed you something you hadn't considered. And with that in mind, thank you for watching, and happy building.